He's holding the R5. One, two, I love it. Let's go. Hey YouTube, what's good? This video is going to be a little bit of an intermission between my Japan series vlogs. If you can't tell, I'm back at home in Sydney, despite how my vlogs look. If you haven't watched my Japan series yet, I'd highly recommend you do. I spent a whole month running around Japan, exploring and shooting photos. I'll link the playlist up here. Let's get to the real reason why you clicked this video, the Canon EOS R5 and R6. I was lucky enough, thanks to Canon Australia, to get some exclusive hands-on time with both cameras something which I don't think a lot of people in the world have got the chance to do yet. I know there are already a ton of videos online, so I won't go too deep into the tech specs. Instead, I'll chat about my hands-on experience with both cameras and what I'm most excited about. Let's jump into it. All right, so the hands-on session was held at Canon Sun Studios here in Sydney. It was a super small group of only five of us given the current social distancing situation. The night started with Canon briefing us and giving us a quick run through of the awesome products they're releasing this week. This was followed by some precious hands-on time with both the R5 and the R6. He's holding the R5. <laughs> what do you got on there? You got a 1.2? Yeah. Bo's got the R6. It's a little baby one. Big boy lens. But it's a 20, lens. Yeah. 28 to 70. 28 to 70, yeah. It's fat. Which one would you choose? I think I'm gonna go for the R5. R5, for sure. <laughs> R5 is bad. Yeah. Though. We're testing out both the cameras and I think I've been hyped about this camera for a long time. Let me kick Daniel off and then we'll jump on. Between the five of us at the event, there were only two R5 bodies on the night. I think if you're gonna order an R5, you better put a deposit down now to get on the waiting list. At the start, the stock is gonna be very, very limited. This isn't surprising given our pandemic situation and manufacturing, so be a little patient if you're trying to get one. All right, so let's start with the R5. This is the camera I'll be buying 100%. The R5 ticks all the boxes for me. I've been waiting the longest time for a hybrid camera that can do photo and video well, and I think it's finally arrived. It's pretty lightweight coming in at 738 grams, and best of all, it means I don't have to carry five cameras around anymore. One of the worst things about being a travel photographer and filmmaker is having to switch camera bodies for photo and then switch it to video. To give you an idea, on my last trip to Japan, which wasn't even for work, it was a personal trip, I carried five cameras in my backpack, including my laptop backpack weight over 15 kilos. The R5 means I only have to carry one main camera body and thank God it can do both photo and video well. Now all I have to do is change the shooting mode and I'm good to go. All right, let's talk about ergonomics. I can confirm both cameras feel great in hand. I've used the EOS R for about six months and while I like it, it does feel on the small side to hold it. That's a How does it feel? Bad boy setup. It actually feels quite good. I was expecting this to be heavier though, the 50. What do you shoot with normally? What's your 5D4, right? 5D4, yeah. How's the mirrorless feel? It's like a different... Mirrorless feels great. Yeah. Everything about it feels great. The light <laughs> is ridiculous. It's super so sharp, snappy, right? Super fast. The focus is fast, so fast, even when you touch screen. In these when kind of conditions. Yeah. It's touch to shoot. I was touching the focus before and it was just so, so quick, even in low light. So I like that. Canon have listened to us and taken away that slightly useless touch bar, which is great. They've also brought back the spinny dial from the 5D series, which I'm pretty happy about. It makes scrubbing through the photos so much easier. As far as size goes on the night, we compared all three bodies side by side, and it's pretty hard to tell the difference between each of them. The only difference is on the top plate, which I'll talk about in a bit. IBIS, in-body image stabilization. This is something that's relatively new to us Canon shooters, so I don't have much experience in shooting with bodies that have IBIS, but from using the R5 and R6, it feels great. It's so smooth, it feels like you're gliding around when you're shooting video. The IBIS also feels like it's not fighting you when you're panning and tilting, which is a common complaint of the other camera brands. There's a high chance I'll be leaving my gimbal at home on future travel trips. I carried it around for a whole month in Japan and only used it once for two minutes. 4K with no compromises. 4K no crop is probably what I'm most excited about to be honest. Up until this point I've been shooting 1080p with the Canon EOS R. It's a great camera but the 4K crop is just too tight even with a 16mm lens. It feels like you're right up against the camera which is a bit uncomfortable. Now with no crop I can shoot 4K natively. 4K 10-bit 422. On the Canon EOS R it shoots 8-bit Canon log. I'm pretty excited to have more flexibility to push my color grading in post. The Canon log 8-bit files in the EOS R are good but they tend to break down when you push them in the color grade. For example, we were driving in the north of Japan through a blizzard and there was lots of banding in the Canon EOS R 8-bit files. 10-bit 422 should help with this a lot. All right, so let's talk a bit about the 8K on the R5. The footage, as you can see here, is insane. The amount of detail is kind of scary, to be honest. 
I shot a lot of 8K footage on the R5 at the hands-on session, but this was mainly just to test the camera. Personally, I don't think I'd be shooting that much 8K. I think some situations might call for it, say you're in a helicopter flying over New York, or you come across an amazing landscape. But other than that, I don't think I'd be shooting 8K because it just doesn't fit into my current workflow. I use a $7,000 MacBook Pro. It's not the fastest that you can buy at the moment, but it absolutely chokes when I try even to play back the 8K files, let alone edit it in Premiere Pro. I don't think, at least what I own anyway, is ready for 8K. The file sizes are insane too. A 512 gigabyte CF Express card can only hold about 20 minutes of 8K raw footage. These cards already cost $1,000 each, not including the reader that you're gonna have to get. That brings me to the obvious elephant in the room. I've read all the chatter over the internet about the R5 overheating. The reality of the situation is pretty unavoidable. It takes a lot of processing power to shoot and store 8K footage, and that will generate lots and lots of heat. It's just physics. A general guide from Canon suggests you can shoot about 20 minutes of 8K RAW and 4K 120 before it starts giving you temperature warnings and shuts off. On the night shooting with R5, I did experience a temperature warning. But keep in mind there were two other guys using the camera before me for about an hour before I got it, so I don't think that really counts. Honestly, if you're shooting a full project in 8K RAW or you need copious amounts of 4K 120 slow motion footage, this camera's probably not for you. You're better off looking at Canon's cinema camera line, which all have huge fans to deal with this heat problem. I'm sure there's going to be a ton of YouTubers who try and push the R5 to its heat limits, and I'm keen to see what happens, but overall I trust Canon with this. For the majority of us, I don't think these heat issues will be a problem. I did get a good amount of hands-on time with R6. To be honest, I think this is the camera that will suit most people out there, especially if you don't shoot video. My prediction is that this camera will sell like hotcakes. Okay, so the initial rumors suggested that the R6 was gonna be lesser build quality than the R5, but I can confirm that this is not the case. Both cameras feel just as sturdy as each other. There are, however, a few things that were taken out of the R6 to lower the price point, which are a lower resolution EVF, 5.75 million dots on the R5 compared to 3.69 million on the R6. The rear LCD is slightly smaller at 3 inches compared to 3.2 inches on the R5. The top plate of the R6 is missing an LCD display and instead has a physical mode dial like the ones you'd find on traditional DSLRs. These differences in practice should have a benefit. They both use the same battery, which means the R6 should last in practice a bit longer than the R5. I was also told on the night by Canon that the R6 is better for low light. With a smaller megapixel count sensor at 20.1 megapixels, it's able to go up to 102,400 ISO versus the R5's 51,200 ISO. The R6 is also slightly better at focusing in low light where it can go to minus 6.5 EV versus the R5's minus 6. So while the video specs on the R6 aren't as good as the R5, which is to be expected, it can still shoot uncropped 4K60 at this price point, which is unheard of in the camera market today. It's important to note that the R6, however, is only able to shoot in IPB mode. This is a slightly lower quality, more compressed mode, but this should save you a lot of storage space. Personally, for me I need a bit more resolution so I'll be going with the R5 with the 45 megapixels compared to the R6 which is 20.1. It's not bad but it's just not enough for me for photography. I also shoot a lot of videos so the R5 is the obvious choice of the two. Which one are you gonna buy? Alright so I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions regarding these two cameras and I just do a quick Q&A session right now. I don't work for Canon so these are just my answers but I'll do my best to try and get you the correct information. So first one, Armand Nicholas, how do they compare to the EOS R? I think there's still a place for the EOS R, it's probably the lower end. If you had a choice I would definitely recommend that you get the R6 over the EOS R. There is a slight price difference of about a thousand, a little bit over a thousand dollars but it's definitely worth it. Next question, Miku, talk about the ISO and dynamic range. I asked about the dynamic range on the night to Canon, but they said that they don't quote dynamic range. So you're gonna have to wait for someone like DxO or someone to test it and chart the, the dynamic range. I shot a bunch of photos in high ISO, so like 10,000, 8,000. But when they returned the sample photos to me, they wiped the metadata clean. The camera wasn't actually released. So I don't know what's what, but from the back of the camera screen, it did look pretty good. Matthew Hill Creative, does the R6 or R5 record video to both SD cards? This is a no, it doesn't. On the R5 especially, two cards are different. It's difficult to write the video to two different bandwidth. can only record video to one at a time. It's also already generating enough heat to write to one card. Imagine you have to do it to two cards. All right, so Adam Tiberi, how do the images compared with the R? Actually, I didn't talk about photography at all in this video because I trust that Canon's got the photo side down. I'm more interested in video because that's, that's where the boundaries are, I guess. And 
I can pretty safely assume that Canon's got all the dynamic range and color and if you shot Canon before you should know so should be fine. LRE Photo, how do both perform with adapted EF lenses, videos and stills? If you've used an EOS R with an adapter, it's pretty good. It's almost the same as the lens is on a older 5D4 for example. So if you're worried about adapting lenses, Canon's pretty good with it. I am Bav, why not Nikon? I don't even know what Nikon is anymore. <laughs> do they still make cameras? Alright, Jonah Gray, recording time limits. They still have the 30 minute uh, record time limit, so it'll stop after 30 minutes, no matter what you're filming. But yeah, I've mentioned earlier, the overheating time limit's a bit different as well. Modern up, cool stuff is there 4K crop on both of the cameras. So there's no 4K crop on the R5. On the R6, there's a very slight crop. I think it's 1.07 or something. So it's pretty negligible, but excited about that. Jonah Gray again, <laughs> got a lot of questions Jonah. Can we pit it up against the BMPCC 6K, Lumix S1H and X-T4 side by side? Well you have the Lumix, I have a BMPCC and we just have to find X-T4. We can definitely do it, so if you want to see that video, uh, leave a comment below. Um, Victor Vichy Chang, can I take selfies with it? You definitely can take selfies with both of them, they have a fully rotatable flippy screen so Take as many selfies and vlog as much as you want. Nikos camera, should the R5 or R6 be my first full frame camera? I'm planning to get a new camera in 2022 or 2023. Uh, if you're gonna wait that long, you should probably see what's on the market then. But if you were to buy a camera soon, if you can afford it, definitely. Money is always an issue. I would probably suggest the R6 first, especially if you're on a bit of a budget. But if not, you can get the EOS R, which should be a lot cheaper now. I've seen a lot on Facebook market of everyone trying to sell their EOS R now to try and upgrade to the R5 or 6. Matt Lambley, raw video only in 8K or can it be used in other resolutions? Unfortunately, it's only in 8K. So yeah, that kind of sucks. I wish there was 4K raw, but I don't know how it works specifically. So that's a no. Nathan Ackley, why aren't you Sony? <laughs> I've been shooting Canon for a long time and I don't like Sony's menus. I don't like their colors and their video is good, but it's a bit plasticky. So people complain about the IBIS all the time, which hopefully should be better in the R5 and R6. And uh, Sony sucks. All right, that about wraps it up. I'm gonna try and get my hands on an R5 as soon as I can, which will be pretty difficult, but if I get it, I'll try and test it for you guys. Let me know what you wanna see me test. Consider subscribing if you're new around here, and if you have a spare minute, you should watch my Japan series. See ya. Let's go.